Hey you guys and welcome to the third and final library edition haul because yeah this is it I am done and I only have five books for you and they are all romance in the nature so hope you guys like those sorry I was just looking to make sure I didn't forget because I thought I totally bought more romance than this but I probably thought I meant to you know how sometimes you think you did and then I meant to go back, but by the time I went back, they had stopped selling them, so it was really hard to go through all these romance books, because I have to read the back of every one, because I can't pick them up at random anymore. You have to be interested in the storyline, because you know, if you ever read a lot of romance books, you know what I'm talking about. So, the first two I got are from, like, my favorite romance author these days, um, well, one of them. And it, her name is Lisa Klepas, and I believe I showed you A Secrets of the Summer Night before. And so the first one I'm going to show you is kind of like from her spinoff series of that, because it followed the first book in the series followed the guy from one of them that was mentioned, and then they have this own series that, you know, follows a group of people. If you read romance, you know how it is. Uh, and the first book is Tempt Me at Twilight. I want to say Midnight for some reason. And that's how it looks. And then if you open it, that's how it looks inside. Yeah, there goes that cheesy romance cover. Okay, so tip me at Twilight. He was everything she sworn to avoid. Poppy Hathaway loves her unconventional family, though she longs for normalcy. Then fate leads to a meeting with Harry Rutledge, an enigmatic hotel owner and inventor with wealth, power, and a dangerous hidden life. When their flirtation compromises her own reputation, Poppy shocks everyone by accepting his proposal, only to find that her new husband offers his passion, but not his trust. And she was everything he needed. Harry was willing to do anything to win Poppy, except to open his heart. All his life, he had held the world at arm's length. But the sharp, beguiling Poppy demands to be his wife in every way that matters. Still, as desire grows between them, an enemy lurks in the shadows. Now, if Harry wants to keep Poppy by his side, he must forge a true union of body and soul once and for all. So, that sounds good. Um... And she usually writes in a good way. I like her writing style and stuff, so I'm really excited. I usually end up liking her character sometimes. <laughs> um, then the next book I got by her is called Love in uh, Honeymoon, Love in Henson, Athena. I have no love in the afternoon. That is not how it looked right there. <laughs> but here we go. Love in the afternoon. Sorry, it took me a while to get that title. And this is how the inside love looks. And here we go. She harbors a secret yearning. As a lover of animals and nature, Beatrix Hathaway has always been more comfortable outdoors than in a ballroom. Even though she participated in the London season in the past, the classic beauty and free-spirited Beatrix has never been swept away or seriously courted, and she has resigned herself to the fate of never finding love. Has a time come for the most unconventional of the Hathaway sisters to settle for an ordinary man? Just to avoid spinsterhood? He is a World War weary cynic. Captain Christopher Flynn is a handsome, daring soldier who plans to marry Beatrix Friend, the vivacious flirt Prudence Mercer, when he turns from fighting abroad. But as he explains in his letter to Peru, life on the battlefield has darkened his soul, and it's becoming clear that Christopher won't come back the same man. When Beatrix learns of Prue's disappointment, she decides to help by concocting Prue's letters to Christopher for her. Soon, the correspondence between Beatrix and Christopher develops into something fulfilling and deep. When Christopher comes home, he's determined to claim the woman he loves. What began as Beatrix's innocent deception has resulted in the agony of unfulfilled love and a passion that cannot be denied. So, that sounds really good, and I'm excited for this one also. And then... <laughs> Um, not in any particular order. I got, um, In Scandal They Wed, which I gotta say, the title just drew me, because, like, really, who, what, what book, what romance book doesn't have scandal these days, really? <laughs> not any interesting ones. The scandals are always interesting. Let's all be honest about that. And this is the cover. Yep. <laughs> and this is the back. Oh, yeah, that that must be the scandal they were talking about. Look at his hand. No, I'm just playing. If you're young, you should probably not be uh, watching at this point. And I don't think I've bred a lot of Sophia Jordan or any at all. I don't have to check, but let's see. 
What kind of woman would marry a man she only just met, the kind with nothing to lose? Long ago, Evelyn Cross sacrificed her good name, her freedom, and any hope for love. Now, in the remote English countryside, she struggles to survive and avoid the scandal threatening to destroy all she holds dear, until a sinfully handsome some Viscount arrives on her doorstep, offering marriage, salvation, and tempting her with so much more. What kind of man would marry a woman he only just met? The kind bound by duty. Fresh from war, Spencer Lockhart returns home to claim his title and right the wrong his cousin perpetrated upon Evelyn Cross. In need of a wife, marrying her is a small price to pay for duty. But when he meets her, the fiery chit is not what he expects to find in a ruined lady. As desires flares hotly between them, honor is the last thing on his mind. <laughs> what kind of man and woman would marry when they had only just met? The kind who could ignite the scandal with just one touch. So... I'm not sure about you guys, but that sounds awesome to me. Yes, it sounds awesome. Sometimes, sometimes you just need a book where you just know all the twists and turns, or most of them, and then they kind of surprise you. But it still ends how you expect it to end. So, <clears throat> Also, this title caught my eye. Also, 10 ways to be adored when landing a lord. Because it just rhymes, like say it 10 times, okay? Maybe not 10 times. But 10 ways to be adored when landing a lord. 10 ways to be a lord when landing a door. I did not say that right. I can't even get to twice. So you guys have fun doing that. And this is how the front cover looks. Um, and then we open it, of course. You have to have that look. But at least it's not all Fabio looking like. I never liked Fabio in the cover of my stuff. Let's see. <laughs> Lord Nicholas is a paragon of manhood in his eyes, dear reader, so blue. Pearls and Perlis, June 1823. Since being named London's Lord to Land, London's Lord to Land by popular ladies magazine, Nicholas St. John has been relentlessly pursued by every matrimony-minded female in the ton. So when an opportunity to escape fashionable society presents itself, he eagerly jumps only to land in the path of the most determined, damnably delicious woman he's ever met. The daughter of titled Wastrail, Lady Isabel Townsend, has too many secrets and too little money. Though she is used to taking care of herself quite handily, her father's recent passing has left Isabel at sea and in need of outside help to protect her young brother's birthright. The sinfully handsome and mentally eligible Lord Nicholas can be the very salvation she seeks. But the lady must be wary and do not do anything reckless and foolish like falling madly, passionately in love. So that sounds awesome. And 10 ways to be adored when landing a lord. I am going to eventually just say that 10 times without messing up. And hopefully I'll capture it on film. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so... The last book that I have to show you is Dukes to the Left of Me, Princess to the Right. And I guess this is part of a serious or like, you know, world because it has the Impossible Bachelors on here. So I'm guessing there's more books in whoever wrote this. And it is by Karen Kramer. And this is how it looks. That's how the cover looks. And yeah, that's all they had. They didn't have anything on back. Just, just how it looks. But the storyline of this one, I was just reading it and I was just like, <laughs> and my friend, she's like, yeah, I, I gotta read that one. She read the Lisa Kleepass one first and then I'm probably gonna give her these other three next. Um, let's see. Their engagement was a fake. Most women would not be pleased to be labeled a spinster. But Lady Poppy Smith Barnes isn't most women. In fact, Poppy has invented an imaginary fiancé, the Duke of Drummond, to deter unwanted suitors. A very useful fellow, this Duke, until the real Drummond turns up and uses Poppy ploy to trap her into a betrothal. Where their passion make it real, a good spy flies behind below the radar, which is why being named one of the Prince's Regent's impossible bachelors is so inconvenient for Nicholas Stoughton. Every society female would be out to ensnare him. Nicholas needs a fiancé, and Poppy's ruse is the answer. How could he have known she'd be a brazen, central siren with an irresistible taste for adventure? Now nothing less will do than to convince his fiery Poppy to revoke her Spencer status for good. So that sounds really good. I like the fact that she had a fake fiancé and now he just turns up. Because that must be <laughs> funny, you know, to us. Pro probably not to her. But yeah, so that sounds like some really good romance novels that I hope to get to soon, hopefully. And as you saw, they're all historical romance. I don't think I've read a modern-day romance unless I'm reading Nora Roberts lately. So maybe I should 
get on that too. I don't think I read a lot of romance this year, mostly YA and mystery and stuff like that. So, romance next year, romance. Bromance, nothing really can be bad. Okay, that had nothing to do with that, but that bromance song just always goes into my head. If you ever heard that song before, awesome song. Uh, I'll leave a link down below. It's by Chester C. and Niga Higa and them. I don't know why I'm babbling at this point. I'm going to just go because I have more things to film. But I hope you guys like these books. If you ever, if yeah, if you heard of them, just let me down, let me know down in the comments below or if you heard of the authors or do any of you guys really read romance? I'd be interested in knowing that. And if you do, name me some good romance books down below that you think that I should check out. And I will see you guys later. Bye.